As part of my sermon writing process, I sometimes like to go back and look at my sermons from the same texts in previous years. So this week, out of curiosity, I opened my sermon from June 18th, 2017, to see what I, what I wrote about the last time these stories came around. You know what I found? I found a sermon about the recent death of Philando Castile, another black man murdered by police in Minneapolis. There's a narrative out there that what happened to George Floyd and Philando Castile was a fluke. It was just the actions of a few bad cops in an otherwise good system. That narrative is false. If it were true, what happened to those men would not be happening with such shocking regularity that I could randomly find two weeks, three years apart, where I preached on the same thing. If it were true, there would not be a list of names of black and brown people to whom this same thing has happened. If it were true, we would not know the names of Breonna Taylor and Tamir Rice and Sandra Bland and Freddie Gray and Janet Wilson and Manuel Ellis. It makes one start to feel helpless. No one, regardless of our political stripes, believes that this should have happened. We are all united in our disappointment, our grief, our anger over these deaths. But we start to ask, if we haven't been able to solve this problem in the last three years, the last three decades, in the last three centuries, how can we expect to solve it now? What can possibly change? What can we do? Rallies, protests, peaceful and otherwise, calls to national leaders, elections, nothing seems to be doing anything. The question now on everybody's lips is where do we go from here? What do we do next? The seeds of equality have been sown and the harvest of justice is ripe and plentiful, but the laborers seem so few. We would all like a simple answer to our question about what do we do now? A simple change to make or a single action that we can take. One reform that we can get past. And while there is certainly much for us to do, in order to truly find healing, we have to look just deeper than just our actions. Because racism is not a fluke. It's not the problem of a few bad actors, a few crooked cops. That narrative is false. At best, it is naive, but at worst, it is fatally deceitful. Racism is the original sin of our country, the stain in the very fabric of our collective being. From the very first, our economy, our infrastructure, our social structure have all been built on the exploitation of people of color. The only one who can cleanse us from this sin is God. And so we hear Jesus say to us, as well as to his disciples today, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. And even as we pray that prayer, we see that the answer to our prayers, that the laborers God is sending, are us. Now, if we were able to save ourselves, we would have done it a long time ago, wouldn't we? It sounds maybe like God is turning us around saying to us, you got yourselves into this mess, you can get yourselves out. But that's not what's happening here. You see, racism isn't just a bad habit we've picked up. It's a part of our identity. It's a part of who we are, how we have been formed as a nation. And so the only solution to this problem of identity is for our God, our creator, to give us a new identity, to form us into something new, to give us new birth into a new life. But that's exactly what God does. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us, sharing with us his life, making us children of his Father. 
In the waters of baptism, we have received a new identity formed not by sin, but by grace and justice and mercy and forgiveness. Christ has chosen us out of the world to be remade in God's image and then sends us back into the world to be the laborers bringing in God's harvest. The labor may be ours, but the work is God's and God's alone. That's good news, because if you're like me, you want to be helpful in this moment, but you may not know how. You want to do something, but you might be afraid that what you do will be wrong or hurtful. Thankfully for us, God doesn't call only people who are already equipped to do what needs doing. Instead, instead, God equips those of us whom God has called. Jesus doesn't send out the disciples because they were accomplished healers and exorcists. They were fishermen and farmers, tradesmen and tax collectors. And yet because Jesus sent them out, they were able to cure the sick and cast out demons and even raise the dead. We can accomplish God's will not because we are able, but because God is. God's ability is what matters in the situation, not our own. In chemistry, a reaction between two ingredients sometimes won't happen without a substance called a catalyst. A catalyst is something that takes part in the reaction but isn't consumed by it. Even a small amount of catalyst can catalyze practically an infinite amount of reactants. In order for the reaction to work, though, the chemist has to correctly choose which catalyst works for a given situation. Now, the catalyst doesn't have to do anything. It just simply works because that's what it is. It's the chemist who uses the catalyst to achieve the desired result. In the same way, it is up to God to achieve this desired result to bring in the harvest, using Jesus' metaphor. Our job is not so much to do as to be who God has formed us and is forming us in the waters of baptism to be. We are God's catalysts. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have to do anything, that we can sit back on our hands and wait for God to work, because that's not what happens. But it does mean that just as important as what we do is who we are. Because who we are forms our actions. What this means for us is that when you hear this story, you should hear that you are enough. That hunger for justice, that thirst for what is right, that is your God-given gift in this moment. That is what God is using to change the world. It exists because God called you in your baptism, to love and serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for peace and justice in all the earth. You have been formed by the love of God, the same God who gives God's very life for you, even while you were still a sinner. Even now, God is honing that gift with word and sacrament and with the community of saints. In that community, the stories and the experiences, the courage and the wisdom of our siblings of color are changing us into people who can work for justice. Within that community, we may lift up our voices alongside theirs to demand what is right. God is saving us by bringing us and our varied gifts together making us one with those who suffer. For all who suffer oppression and injustice are one in the Christ who suffers among us. So how do you answer Jesus' call to go out, to heal and exercise, to cast out demons and proclaim the kingdom of God? The answer is simple. It's the simplest thing one can do. But at the same time, it's also the most difficult. We answer Jesus' call 
by being who we are, by being fully ourselves in this moment and in this place in which God has placed us. So live into your identity as a child of God, and you will, by very nature of your presence, bring good news to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Child of God, by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have been freed from the power of sin and death, freed from the fear and the scarcity that keeps us suckling at the teats and worshiping at the altars of a system built on the backs of our black and brown siblings. You have been made free to be the hands of freedom for your family, to be the catalyst of God's change in this world. Go, therefore, fearlessly into that world, healing the sick, casting out demons, even raising the dead. Don't let that fear of failure hold you back, but boldly proclaim the coming of God's kingdom. God is giving us everything we need in the stories and the experiences of our siblings of color to demand the change this world needs. Listen to those stories. Be formed by those stories, because that is God's work. Let them light a fire in you, a fire that burns for justice. Amplify their voices, and we will see that the Lord of the harvest is indeed sending out laborers to reap justice and peace. Together with our black and brown siblings, we are the holy people that God has created and formed for just such a time as this.